She lied. She lied about everything, from the baritone of her voice to the realism of her technology. What does psychology say about her actions and how to classify them? Let's explore. Elizabeth Holmes started Theranos in 2003 as a goal to, quote, democratize healthcare. She had wanted to be a billionaire as her life goal, and she modeled her life and look after Steve Jobs by dressing in a black turtleneck and moving her meetings to the days he scheduled his own. Her medicine professor, Phyllis Gardner, told her that her idea wouldn't work because it was physically impossible, and several of her colleagues agreed. What was that grand idea? Holmes wanted to perform blood tests with only the blood from pricking the tip of a finger. Her own personal fear of needles was the main inspiration for this idea. The tech was also said to test a range of health issues from one blood sample stored in her nanotainers or tiny vials for blood collection, which obviously is unbelievable. But could have been genius if true. Long story short, she was a fraud all along. Of course, her ideas would never work and her lying to cover up her shortcomings was never ending. According to psychology, people with these actions display traits of a psychopath. Not only is she a pathological liar, but she would stop at nothing to see her own obsessions through. The top position of power most attractive to a psychopath is a CEO, the alpha and omega of a company. The ability to engage in a thought process, an environment, and a group of people to play leader to who cannot question or deny you as the perfect role for a woman like Holmes. Her story is to be portrayed by both Jennifer Lawrence and Amanda Seyfried. Lawrence looks more the part and I can really see her nailing the fake baritone voice. Speaking of on-screen portrayals, this is a lot like her idol Steve Jobs, who was played by look-alike Ashton Kutcher and not-so-look-alike Michael Fassbender. Even while on trial, Holmes still pays homage to Jobs without even trying. Amazing. And that trial is a rather sticky one. According to the Wall Street Journal, the jury is to hear from faulty Theranos test patients. They apparently received faulty test results, which in some cases can prove to be life-threatening. Individuals with high levels of psychopathy, narcissism, and Machiavellianism, known as the dark triad of personality traits, do not appear to have an impaired ability to empathize according to the new research published in the journal Personality and Individual Differences. But these individuals are not inclined to use this ability. Remember, this is the same woman who wanted to democratize medicine by making blood testing easier and faster for everyone by producing faster and more varied results from one drop alone. She cared enough to start the vision, but was just greedy enough to disregard the actual people she originally sought to help. She faces counts of mail fraud for deceiving investors, patients, and doctors about Theranos' blood test tech. Holmes was indicted on charges of fraud in June 2018. The youngest self-made female billionaire has thrown everything down the drain, everything but her lavish lifestyle, which her lawyers claim should not be taken into account because it could conjure, quote, class prejudice among the jury. According to the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America, quote, Psychopathic individuals behave in callous and antisocial ways that suggest that these individuals fail to consider what others are thinking. Holmes fired any and everyone around her who questioned her authority, even when it made them question their own intelligence by trying to stick to what they hoped was a brilliant idea that would just magically work, even if they knew it was far too good to be true. Ramesh Bawani proved to be no different in his penchant for perjury. Naturally, he would make a great ally, business partner, lover, and enabler of Holmes. Psychopaths are attracted to each other, and among the breakdown of the events of Theranos, it was discovered that Balwani, as president of Theranos, was just as stubborn as Holmes. He also engaged in paranoia about corporate espionage, Basically, he worried the jig would be up and that someone else in the commercial industry of medicine would look into the creations of Theranos for a competitive edge, but would instead find the major flaws, and he and Holmes tried desperately to hide that. He was even less convincing than his equally shady counterpart. He believed in speaking the Queen's English of tech without any understanding of its terminology. He would often misuse and misunderstand words 
that he frequently repeated to sound smarter than he was. For example, the phrase end effector means the end of a robot's arm that is designed to interact with an environment. He misheard it as endofactor, and it became a running gag within the company to include the gaffe in PowerPoints during meetings. Incompetent and bold seems to be the running theme with Theranos & Co. In fact, bold enough to claim 2014 earnings as 100 million when, in reality, it was just 100,000. The psychopathic ego leads people like Holmes to stretch the reality. She could not handle the amount, so she changed it to an M to overcompensate how she really sees herself, an undeservingly inflated figure. Now that we have an understanding of her mentality, let's go through a timeline of her major mistakes that got her in the situation she is in now. Let's continue. In 2013, Theranos partnered with Walgreens to reach customers directly. The next year, in 2014, Holmes does a TED talk on how she plans to revolutionize blood testing in the medical industry. All is well until professionals from the medical field start to question Theranos in 2015. Dr. John Ioannidis wrote a piece for the Journal of the American Medical Association in which he criticized Holmes and Theranos for operating in stealth mode, meaning the company was basically accused of hiding research in peer-reviewed medical journals. By July of that same year, the Theranos blood test for herpes simplex virus 1 is approved by the FDA. December that same year, it came under scrutiny after two former employees called the nanotainers or one-drop blood vials for the company's blood testing machines inaccurate. The company responded by saying those employees were, quote, disgruntled. So Holmes volunteered to have a further inspection by the FDA and was cleared. Psychology Today states that one thing psychopaths and heroes have in common is bravery. Holmes is indeed the hero of medicine in her own mind, right? Bold, fearless traits are often associated with heroic behavior, but callous traits such as meanness and coldness are not. More puzzling is that people with a history of antisocial behavior are more likely to engage in heroic acts to help others. Psychology Today. A common theme in medicine, I fear, an industry that is built on helping others but are just socially disconnected enough to not care when you are no longer seen as viable. I believe there are a lot of Elizabeth Holmes types in this field. They were just smart enough to not get caught in such a public way. Moving on through 2015, former Vice President and current President Joe Biden actually toured Theranos. Talk about inspirational. This is inspirational. Biden commenting on soon-to-be-defunct Theranos operations. Now, here's where things spell absolute disaster for our medical hero. On October 15th and 16th of 2015, the Wall Street Journal published a devastating article on Theranos. Journalist John Carreyou interviewed ex-employees who claimed that management was exaggerating the capabilities of the technology as well as lying to the public and being overall pretty incompetent. Holmes quickly appeared on Mad Money later that day. She claims, quote, This is what happens when you work to change things. First, they think you're crazy. Then they fight you. And then, all of a sudden, you change the world. End quote. Now let's continue to October 16th, 2015. Wall Street Journal reports in a follow-up piece that Theranos has been forced to stop all operations with blood testing equipment and nanotainers except for one, that one being mentioned earlier in the doc as herpes simplex virus 1. November 2015. A steady momentum in the downfall. A $350 million deal with Safeway falls through, also reported by Wall Street Journal. In December 2015, Wall Street Journal releases yet another report that claims Theranos rigged tests to produce better results. March 2018, Theranos is charged with fraud by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. They accuse Holmes and Balwani of, quote, raising more than $700 million from investors through an elaborate, years-long fraud in which they exaggerated or made false statements about the company's technology, business, and financial performance, end quote. In the wake of this charge, Holmes is stripped of her control of the company, forced to return millions of shares to Theranos, and is barred from serving as an officer 
or director of any public company for 10 years. What a fall from grace for someone who was admittedly brilliant in a way, maybe brilliant to a fault. In June 2018, a federal grand jury indicts Holmes and Bawani of two counts of conspiracy and nine counts of wire fraud, finding that the pair had, quote, engaged in a multi-million dollar scheme to defraud investors and a separate scheme to defraud doctors and patients, end quote. Holmes then stepped down as CEO but remained on the company's board. By September 5th, 2018, Theranos is unable to find a buyer and was forced to close and pay all remaining cash back to creditors. Theranos alerted investors of this closing via email. Theranos website also shut down and the Wall Street Journal reported that equity investments in the company were practically worthless. Now, that leads us to today. As of Friday, May 28th, homes and lawyers have requested that jurors should refrain from widespread negative coverage upon selection. Always needing control in the wake of punishment is a very Holmes thing to do. Mind you, this was after the trial was already delayed for her surprise pregnancy announcement on May 17th. She also married her husband, Billy Evans, in 2019. When paparazzi caught up with her, she seemed so nonchalant. She displays zero ability to reconcile with the consequences of her own doing and how to reflect on them humbly. It's as if life did not stop. Just Theranos. Let's see if this is an obstacle she can overcome without an innovative lie in the face of truth and law and order. This is what happens when you work to change things. And first they think you're crazy, then they fight you, and then all of a sudden you change the world. 